Jeffrey E. Garten, Three Days at Camp David, How a Secret Meeting in 1971 Transformed the Global Economy. Welcome to the captivating world of economics and politics in the book, Three Days at Camp David. How a Secret Meeting in 1971 Transformed the Global Economy, by Jeffrey E. Garten. This summary takes you behind the scenes of a secret meeting in 1971 that marked the end of the Bretton Woods fixed currency system. Discover how President Richard Nixon's pivotal decision forever changed the global economy. And explore the personalities, motives, and long-lasting consequences of this clandestine gathering. As you read, you will unravel the complex web of economic and political factors that eventually led to the end of America's role as the leader of the free world. Nixon's Decision Garden's book exposes President Richard Nixon's weekend decision in 1971 to terminate the Bretton Woods fixed currency system, which eventually put an end to America's leadership status. Garton, a former senior advisor to the Nixon, Carter, and Clinton administrations, meticulously describes the personalities and the political and economic motivations in the covert meetings. Nixon's decision was the turning point in American history, and Garton's vivid details allow readers to examine the ramifications of breaking away from the gold standard and dismantling the post-war monetary arrangement. The Bretton Woods Agreement in 1944, the Bretton Woods Conference established the fixed exchange rate of $35 per ounce of gold for U.S. dollars and allowed other currencies to fluctuate by only 1%. The agreement aimed to provide stability to a recovering global economy post-World War II. However, the uncontrollable increase in U.S. dollars led to strain against the fixed exchange rate, causing other nations' exports to grow and the U.S. to dominate the global economy. Eventually, the agreement's failure was foreseen, leading to its demise, nicknamed the Death Watch for Bretton Woods, due to the Vietnam War and LBJ's social programs. U.S. Gold Reserves Deplete In 1955, the U.S. had enough gold to cover their liabilities to other central banks and governments by 1.6 times. However, by 1971, they only had one quarter of the gold required to match these liabilities. The increase in foreign investments by U.S. multinational companies, high wages making exports uncompetitive, and domestic inflation were some of the reasons behind their depleted gold reserves. Central banks holding U.S. dollar reserves could see the situation worsening but did not want to antagonize the U.S. by cashing in their dollars for gold, leading to decreased control of the Bretton Woods system. Nixon's Shocking Decision In August 1971, President Nixon gathered top economic advisors at Camp David to discuss the U.S. commitment to the dollar-gold link. All but one agreed that the U.S. should sever the link unilaterally. A few days later, Nixon announced the decision, which included imposing a 10% tariff on imports and wage and price controls. This became known as the Nixon shock, leaving central banks worldwide holding U.S. dollars of uncertain value. This event had a significant impact on the global economy and marked the end of the Bretton Woods system. Nixon's Short-Term Economic Success The book describes Nixon's efforts to control inflation and reduce unemployment through wage and price controls. Although these policies were labeled as economically illiterate, they allowed Nixon to claim he was controlling inflation while stimulating the economy to reduce unemployment. However, the controls were too hard to administer fairly, leading to an unwieldy bureaucracy and lax fiscal policy. Alongside tax breaks on autos, investment credits, tax incentives for exporters, and promised budget spending cuts, Nixon intended to convey the image of a president providing an assertive response to a national crisis. The whole package would be seen as big and dramatic, and it would show that Nixon had thought of everything. Despite Connolly's nationalist view that imposing a tariff meant negotiating from a position of strength, other countries saw it as hypocritical since the United States had always espoused free trade. Nixon did not care about inflation or monetary issues, only politics motivated the president. Garten explains how Nixon spun his answer to U.S. dollar weakness into American forcefulness, which was supported by the Democratic-controlled Congress and the public. However, the controls did not stop inflation, instead, 
they stored it up for later. Nixon's Diplomacy the 1973 oil crisis led to currency turmoil in the global economy, but the United States refused to support fixed exchange rates. The Jamaica Accords were signed in 1976, formalizing the floating currencies, non-system. Nixon approached America's allies confrontationally but later switched to international cooperation. According to Garton, Nixon's wise selection of experts and willingness to listen showed good judgment in diplomacy. Garton's Eye-Opening Narrative Garton's expertise in government, academia, and finance provides a captivating narrative of the processes of history. His book offers insight into the connections between personality, pragmatism, and policy that drive decision-makers in politics and economics. The book delves into the decisions made between August 13 and 15, 1971, and their consequences. Garton's narrative is suspenseful, fascinating, and enjoyable, even for those without an economics background. This book is a valuable read for anyone interested in policymaking, banking, or economics. As we conclude this summary of A Three Days at Camp David, we can appreciate the significance of Nixon's decision to end the Bretton Woods fixed currency system and its impact on the global economy. The aftermath of this secret meeting shaped the future of international monetary policy and marked the beginning of a new era of floating currencies. Moreover, it exposed the fragility of America's economic dominance and highlighted the importance of international cooperation. The story from that historic weekend of August 13 to 15, 1971, serves as a potent reminder of how the complex interplay between economics, politics, and personalities can transform the world in ways that continue to reverberate today.